He's deep in his heart relishing his relationship with Krishna. Elevation to this stage of ecstasy can be possible in two ways. One way is by constant association with pure devotees. The other way is by the special mercy of Krishna or by the mercy of a pure devotee of Krishna. Elevation to the ecstatic stage of life is generally attained through association with pure devotees, while elevation to that stage by the special mercy of Krishna or his devotee is very rare. The purport is that one should execute devotional service rigidly in the association of devotees so that there will be certainty in raising oneself to that ecstatic position. In special cases, of course, there is special favor from Krishna. And although we should always expect that, we should not sit idly and simply wait for Krishna's special mercy. The regular duties must be performed. It is just as when Sometimes it is found that a person who has never attended school or college may be recognized as a great scholar, or an honorary degree from great university may be offered to him. But this does not mean that one should avoid school and expect to automatically receive an honorary degree. <laughs> Similarly, one should devoutly execute the regulative principles of devotional service, and at the same time hope for Krishna's favor or for his devotee's favor. So, uh, yeah, sometimes amazing, wonderful things happen. Uh, but we shouldn't expect to be the exception. We should, instead, we should expect to be the rule. And the rule is that one advances in devotional service very gradually, over a long period of time, by association with pure devotees. That's the normal process. And occasionally, the, there's an exceptional process where one gets special mercy, special blessing. Maybe he has to execute some special service or some extraordinary difficult task for Krishna. And so he gets uh, Krishna's mercy or he gets the mercy of a pure devotee to accomplish uh, this special task. <laughs> we have little experience of that. An example of rising to the stage of ecstatic love by executing the regulative principles of devotional service is given in the life story of Narada, which is described to Vyasadeva in Srimad Bhagavatam. Narada tells there of his previous life and how he developed to the stage of ecstatic love. He was engaged in the service of great devotees and used to hear their talks and songs. Because he had the opportunity to hear these pastimes and songs of Krishna from the mouths of pure devotees, he became very attracted within his heart. Because he had become so eager to hear these topics, he gradually developed within himself an ecstatic love for Krishna. This ecstatic love is prior to the pure love of Krishna, because in the next verse, Narada confirms that by the gradual process of hearing from the great sages, he developed love of Godhead. In that connection, Narada continues to say in the first canto, fifth chapter, verse 28 of the Bhagavatam, First, I passed my days in the association of the great sages during the rainy autumn season. Every morning and evening, I heard them while they were singing and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and thus my heart gradually became purified. As soon as I heard them with great attention, the influence of the modes of material ignorance and passion disappeared, and I became firmly fixed in devotional service to the Lord. So this is why we do these uh, webcasts. This is why we uh, have a forum. This is why we try to record all of our association and then distribute it all over the world on the internet so that people can perform this process of regular association with devotees. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, devotees are very rare, especially pure devotees are extremely rare. You can't find them everywhere. Sometimes you can't find them anywhere. <laughs> 
after Srila Prabhupada's disappearance, I looked everywhere for some devotees who were in a similar mood to myself, uh, but more advanced, because I wanted to continue this process myself. This is the recommended uh, process. The one says here, we should always expect the, the mercy of Krishna or hope for the mercy of Krishna, but we shouldn't give up the regular regular process of advancement in devotional service. Uh, um, but I was placed in a situation where I didn't have access to that process anymore. The only thing I could do was approach Krishna through his holy name and beg for his mercy. That was the only option. It was There was no other option because I couldn't find anybody who was in the same mood and more advanced and without deviating. Uh, so uh, this was Krishna's arrangement, of course. <laughs> Sometimes Krishna puts his devotee in a, a situation, an extraordinary situation, where he has to surrender. I mean, look at Arjuna in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita. He was in a, such an extraordinary situation, unprecedented in Vedic history, where the two members of the, of the ruling dynasty of the whole planet, the two branches, were fighting with each other. And this is practically unknown in Dvapar Yuga. In Kali Yuga, it's common. But back in Dvapar Yuga, it was like the first time it had ever happened. It was, it was unknown. What, what should he do? There was no precedent. So he approached Krishna, and Krishna gave some special instructions, and after that, everything was clear. You see? So sometimes we have to do. There are practical examples of how one can develop to the stage of ecstatic love simply by the association of pure devotees. It is essential, therefore, that one constantly associate with pure devotees who are engaged morning and evening in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. That's what we're doing here. In this way, one will get the chance to purify his heart and develop this ecstatic, pure love for Krishna. This statement is also confirmed in the third canto, 25th chapter, verse 25 of Srimad Bhagavatam, where Lord Kapila says, My dear mother, when a person is actually in association with pure devotees, the sublime potency of my devotional service can be experienced. How is that? Huh? Because when we speak, we, we speak of the topics of devotional service to Krishna with great affection. It's not like we're just speaking on some ordinary subject matter. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the affection and the warmth in a devotee's heart, the enthusiasm in the devotee's heart is manifest in, his, in the sound vibration. Uh, like you can hear Srila Prabhupada preaching. Srila Prabhupada is preaching like he has three heads and ten mouths. And, and he wants to say all this stuff that, you know, how wonderful Krishna's devotional service is. So it's very beneficial to listen to Srila Prabhupada's preaching because of this. Uh, we should uh, take every opportunity possible to, to hear from Srila Prabhupada. In other words, when a pure devotee speaks, his words act upon the hearts of the audience. What is the secret of hearing and chanting? A professional speaker cannot impress transcendental ecstasy within the hearts of the listeners. However, when a realized soul who is engaged in the service of the Lord is speaking, he has the potency to inject spiritual life within the audience. One should therefore seek the association of such pure unalloyed devotees and by such association and service a neophyte devotee will certainly develop attachment, love and devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Padma Purana there is the story of a neophyte devotee who in order to raise herself to the ecstatic platform danced all night to invoke the Lord's grace upon her. a super effort, in other words. If some devotee does a, a super effort 
way beyond the, the ordinary call of duty. Huh? Sometimes Krishna will be attracted. And you know, Srila Prabhupada often said, don't you try to see Krishna, but try to attract Krishna to see you. In other words, do something extraordinary. Do something wonderful. Huh? Do something that's so nice that even Krishna is attracted. Oh, what is this devotee? Look? He's doing so nice service. But Krishna comes and, and sees you. Huh? That's how you get the special mercy. You want the special mercy? You have to do something special to deserve it. Huh? Yes, yeah, just executing the regulative principles of devotional service will get you there sooner or later. But if you really want the special mercy, do some special service. Something far beyond the 